Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. This is Heather Lynn, owner of Lobo Designs, and I'm here today with a different type of tutorial focused on how to put together one of my Etsy files or a bunch of my Etsy files. I don't know if you've ever been to my Etsy shop, but I have a few of these photo frame files for laser users to use on their machines so that they can replicate the designs that I use for my physical items. And in front of you, you'll see a layout of what the file itself looks like and the finished product. And the star of the frame is the one and only Logan Robert, Lobo. That is my son. He's currently three years old and he is a handful. <laughs> this is one of my favorite files though and it's one of my most popular. So with Father's Day coming up, I figured this was the best time to put together a tutorial on how to make one. So let's dive in. So first I'm gonna do a quick rundown of what the file looks like, um, explanation of what the text means in my file, kind of the layout of the entire design, and then I will show you an example of how to construct it as much as I can on screen. So for this file, it comes in, uh, it's three layers. So it has this backboard piece up here, which is the top, let's ungroup that real quick. So this top um, in red, this is your backboard, and this is the front piece on the right. And then these middle pieces here are the middle layer, which you don't see, but they sit behind here. If you can see where my mouse is moving underneath here, they sit underneath of these frames so as the middle piece so that this photo slides right out the top and um, clients can change it as much as they want to. And then what I do is I include this cutout as a clear acrylic jig. I attach it to the back of this back piece. I attach it with a magnet so that clients can lay it flat on top of their photo paper or their pictures or whatever to cut out an easy this one, a D shape of their photo without having to guess, oh, how do I make this curve? How do I make this rounded? They'll have um, basically a jig to use to cut photos to size. You don't have to use that. If you decide not to use that on the back of your piece, just don't cut this piece up the top, but I'll show you um, how it gets constructed uh, in a little bit. But for right now, the Back piece up here, top left, you'll notice that it has blue markings in the center, and those are score marks. This is the biggest um, mistake that I see people make with this file. This top text says, set blue lines to draft score. This means that these lines don't cut these. You're going to just score the back of the backer, the front of the backer, with score marks so that you know where to put these middle pieces. Basically that is where these pieces are gonna fall in. They're gonna go in the middle of the frame. So this is just telling you that's where those pieces go. If you don't need those there, if you don't feel like you need score lines, you could ignore those, but that's what they are. These two bottom pieces are the stand. This is two layers. You can also cut this out, one of these, out of quarter inch material if you choose. And then again, the front, this is the front piece on the right side. You'll notice that I also include a test tab. This means that you want to use this, this part of the design first. You're going to basically cut this tiny little tab and what's gonna happen is when you cut it, this tab should fit snug into this piece. So basically you'll have a, a little wooden piece with a hole in it. And then this will be your little test tab. If those don't fit snugly, you're going to have to change that. I'm also going to include a link to Big Blue Laser Designs Curve video on YouTube, which is excellent at showing uh, users, laser users especially, how Curve works. But that's what that test tab is for. Cut that first before you do anything. That way you make sure that these tabs are going to work perfectly for you. If they don't work, these need adjusting. Again, I'm going to include a link on how you can review instructions on how to adjust that properly. And I will then hop over to another screen that's going to show you an easy way on how to put everything together, I hope. So let's hop over to that other screen. And now that we're in that other screen, I can kind of show you how it would look if you were cutting it on wood or acrylic. So let's pretend that this is a chalk painted MDF board with score marks. This is also a chalk painted MDF board cut out. These are your middle pieces, also MDF, and your bottom pieces, also MDF. So the first thing that I do is I use 3M for everything. I use 3M for everything. I don't use glue, I use 3M adhesive for everything. I use 467 MP, I use 468 MP, I also use 300 LSE. I mostly use 467 MP. Um, that's, that's my favorite. Uh, the others work just as good. I just have more 467 and I'm a little bit of a 3M hoarder. So I have a bunch of it. 
But I use 3M for all of my quote unquote gluing because I can't stand using glue. I think it's a mess. I think it's a waste of time. Um, personal preference, again, if you love using glue, entirely up to you. <laughs> entirely up to you. That rhymes. So first what I do is I glue these two pieces together. So I'm just going to pretend that we're gluing. Now they're one shape, right? So now they were one eighth. It's a, one, it's a quarter inch piece of material right now. Using our imagination heavily on this one. This is a clear acrylic jig. We're going to move that off to the side for a minute. These are your middle pieces. These will get glued into the score marks on your backboard. Dropping these here. You're then going to drop this. So now we have two layers, backboard, middle layer. And if, you're if you think about it, we're thinking, let's make this your photo for a second. You're dropping a picture in, okay? So this is how your pictures slide in. And then this is your front. Let's call this the... Zoom in for a minute just so I can place this in place a little bit more. All right, and then we have the full frame, and then that's going to drop right into these pieces right there. And there's your dad frame. And then what I do, like I said, I put this acrylic jig on the back so that the client can cut their photos to size. You don't need this if you don't want to use it. Throw it out the window if you don't need it. But here is your frame in somewhat real life. <laughs> And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.